What about stretching? That's something, um, you know, I've, I see people stretching in the gym, they're stretching before a set, they're stretching in between sets, um, after working out. Is it, it, what role does stretching play in, I mean, in muscle protein synthesis or muscle hypertrophy or injury or anything, flexibility, anything? Yeah, so different, uh, approach it from different levels, but on a basic level, most people think of stretching from a flexibility standpoint. Do people need to stretch? If you need more flex flexibility, then it would be beneficial to stretch. Um, stretching for the sake, or getting, I should say this, uh, gaining flexibility for the sake of gaining flexibility is, is misguided because increased flexibility reduces the stability of the joint. So if you can do what you need to do from an activities of daily living standpoint, from a you know, fle uh, mobility and flexibility standpoint, no, no reason to gain more flexibility. If you are a, let's say, a punter in football, you're going to need to be able to get your leg very high, or a raquette in the Radio City musical. Uh, they would you know, necessarily want to do, if they're not able to do it, or even to continue doing it, to do some type of flexibility training. Um, but for the majority of people, that's not an issue. So they'd have to, everyone has to assess their own flexibility needs. With that said, resistance training itself is a active form of flexibility training. And there's been studies that show that compared to static stretching, you get similar benefits doing resistance training protocols provided that you're training through a full range of motion. So if you are lifting weights, total body through a full range of motion, you get similar benefits to static stretching. Combining them is even better if you want to add on your flexibility. So if you don't think you've gotten enough flexibility from your resistance training and you need more from an ADL activities daily living standpoint, then go for it. Now, I will approach this also from a muscle protein synthesis. This is actually quite interesting. Uh, I'm collaborating with a group from Germany and they actually have other research that's recently come out showing that Long term, if you stretch, now this is a lot of stretching, but they did an hour a day using the stretching boot. Um, they got marked hypertrophy, like 15% growth in the calf muscles. Um, and the yeah, muscle thickness, really interesting. Now, I don't know who wants to use a, cat, a stretching boot for an hour a day, um, but it just shows that stretching, I mean, it's uh, th there is tension during the stretch and that tension, uh, muscle tension is a mechanism of hypertrophy. So doing long, uh, long duration stretching, and these were intense stretches uh, that were uh, like an eight out of 10 on the discomfort scale. So not a fun thing. So it's not like, oh, I'm stretching, you know, and they were fairly intense stretch. Um, so it does show that stretching itself can have an anabolic effect. We recently published a study, and there were some uh, papers before this also showing this, that what's called interset stretch, loaded stretch, um, promoted somewhat greater gains. We used it in the calf uh, exercise. So basically subjects did calf raises, what's called plantar flexion for their uh, gastrocnemius and soleus, which are the two, soleus mus uh, two uh, calf muscles. And um, this was actually within subject design where one leg, they just rested for two minutes between the sets. They did their calf a raise and then they rested to us. The other group, uh, the other leg, they would do their set and then immediately after the session, the uh, set, they would descend into a stretch and with the weight still on. So they were basically it was a loaded stretch and it's intense. I mean, it was, you know, they, they were kind of hurting at that last, uh, were doing what they could to endure towards the end of the stretch. And they did it for 20 seconds and then the, they rested for the rest of the rest interval. And uh, we found somewhat greater growth in the soleus muscle and really no difference, no substantial difference in the gastrocnemius. Now, interestingly, the soleus is a type one dominant fiber muscle. It's about 80% slow twitch type one fibers. So it kind of raises the possibility is the stretching, at least the loaded stretching that we're doing more specific to type one fibers than type two, not sure. All this talk makes me think about yoga and I mean, yoga, I mean, it's stretching, but it's also like pretty intense. I mean, you're holding the pose and your muscles are hurt. Like, what are you, what are, what are your thoughts on yoga? Does it 
some, somehow you think it could you could extrapolate a little bit? Yeah, so I, um, now again, there are different, I'm not a yoga specialist, but I have, I, I do know something about it. And there's different forms of yoga uh, that have, some have more quote unquote strength related uh, focuses within them. Um, you certainly can gain muscle from uh, yoga, but is it going to optimize muscle? No, because again, you're not really, uh, as a general rule, at least from what I know through most of the forms of yoga, you're really not challenging over time. Maybe at the beginning when you're a newbie, you, you can, that's where you're going to see your gains. But over time, you don't challenge the muscle sufficiently uh, to need to adapt. So you will plateau rather quickly. Uh, and you'll maintain. So you, you can get some gains at the beginning. Uh, can there be ways that you might uh, adapt yo or alter the yoga principles to doing that? I would guess, but I'm not familiar enough with the strategy to, uh, you know, to say. So maybe yoga wouldn't, shouldn't be used in, uh, in, instead of a resistance correct. training, but in addition to... That would be correct. Would yeah, be if if you nice... want to optimize, again, I... Resistance training is paramount. Regard with all of these other things are potentially beneficial, and um, again, if, if you have all the time in the world, do them all. Uh, to to the extent I shouldn't say, it would, as long as you're not overtraining, to the extent that you don't overtrain within your body's capabilities. But um, I think if you can only do one, my objective, somewhat biased, uh, view is that resistance training is irreplaceable. Um, yeah, I, I, there were some people that were kind of, you know, mostly women wondering, oh, can yoga be considered <laughs> resistance training? And I was thinking, I was like, oh, I don't know, that's a good question because, you know, I could in my head come up with a way, well, yes, it would be. <laughs> so that is good to know. 